This is 25-year-old Tyreek Neal. Tyreek was a fast food worker in Camp County, Texas. He was known in the area for winning $200,000 on a $5 scratch ticket. Tyreek was the quiet type who spent a lot of time by himself. In November of 2021, he was arrested for the murder of Michaela Goodson. Well, I got some uh, bottled water here. You need a bottle of water? Oh, I'm okay. Thank you. Uh, well, we just want to visit with you a little bit. and uh, You may have some questions for us, and we'd like to talk to you a little bit about your case. Okay. So, Investigator Huggins you met last night, he come over and gave you a ride back in that fancy taxi. Was it fancy enough for you? It was a charger, wasn't it? Yeah. Was it an SRT or RT? I think it's just an RT. Yeah, I have one also. Yeah. Well, he's gonna go over the things that we're required to do before we talk to you. Just, just procedural things that we have to go through. Okay. Now, what this right here is is a waiver of rights. What that's saying is, you know, right now you want to waive your rights and talk to us about your case. Just remember, if you do waive your rights and we start talking about you, decide at any point you don't want to talk no more. All you gotta do is say so, and we're done. So do you want, with your rights in mind, do you want to talk to us? Yeah. Okay. Just need you to sign up there saying you understand. Let me ask you a question. Say your middle name again. Cabassier? Cabassier. That's sure. actually a drink. It's what? A drink. Well, I was wondering where you got yeah. that. So who gave you that name? You all? Uh, I, guess, I think it was my aunt that gave me the middle name. Cobassier. Well, I was wondering how you pronounce that. I don't know why I wasn't saying it like that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's unusual. You ever heard anybody else that had that name? So you're a unique. Pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's uh, it's interesting how people come up with some of these names and everything. Did she ever tell you how she came up with it? I never heard like the background story of it, you know. Mm -hmm. But I just know I'm the only boy though. Yeah. I have five sisters total, three on my mom's side and two on my dad's. But, yeah. Well, um, it sounds a lot different than what I how I was pronouncing. I was I, right. I was trying to Caucasia. <laughs> <laughs> did we get some rain today? No, mm -hmm. not yet. It'd be nice if we did, but no, so far we hadn't. So where are you actually from? I'm actually from Dangerfield. Okay. Did you go to school in Dangerfield? Oh, yes, sir. That's why I graduated. Um, I moved to Jefferson almost two years ago because I have a girlfriend. We you know making a baby, so we stand together. Um, she also had two children. I look up to her stepchildren as well. And my baby is actually gonna turn 10 months in a couple of days. A lot of fun at that age, George. You starting to walk? Starting to. <laughs> she like already walking? Yeah, I mean, she started crawling way before I expected. Like, uh, her first time crawling was within a week. I had it on my chest. She crawled up and I happened to be recording. Mm -hmm. And I would say about two or three months ago, I just put it on the ground. She threw it on my, what? And you she's other speaking. Kids? Just one. one. Yeah, just the one. Yeah. Well, she's speaking, saying yeah. mama, dad, and all that. Well, I imagine at this point, uh, you kind of got yourself in a, a jam, but uh, yeah. you probably thinking about a lot of things, thinking about you. My baby. Baby yeah. there and all that, and you just want to do the right thing, don't you? Yes, yeah, pretty much clear my name. Mm -hmm. According to the affidavit, Tyreek owed Michaela $200, so he planned to meet and pay her at her home. When he arrived, he emptied two full magazines into her body. Her body was discovered the following day, but the police had no idea who took her life. While they were examining the crime scene, the police received a call from one of Tyreek's relatives. The caller claimed that Tyreek had shown him the gun and the ammunition after the murder took place, and he told him what he had done. So, what can, what can you tell me? I mean, how do you know Michaela? I I can't personally say I know her, but like uh, as I said, I was in high school and dance and stuff. Like I used to be around like Pittsburgh, Q Springs, and stuff like that, just chilling. Yeah, we'll see each other and speak, but we never personally knew each other. Now I would say about mm, three weeks ago, I came across her on Snapchat because we had each other on there. And it was like, this girl looks familiar. 
and she posted on her private story and you know what females post on their private story like sexual content and then my mind was oh i want some of that <laughs> at the same time even though i had a girlfriend like, no. uh, which i told her to yes i ended up cheating um i hit her up for that but i also said i don't want it to be just for that i actually want to like, chill and stuff with you and she sent her location to me i went over there and I'm not going to lie, um, I don't smoke or nothing, but I only smoke half a little blunt with her. And she just kept smoking back at the back at the back at the back. And I'm looking like something's not right. And I just started talking to her about my personal life, something I've never told anyone. Um, like how I'm the only boy. I never spoke that to anyone, not even my own girlfriend that I've been with almost two years. I asked her uh do she have any kids she said no and i don't plan on it and i said me in my opinion i think every woman on this planet should have at least one don't rush it though that case in case you go away you can have a little piece left over yeah. and she actually had it in mind i saw it in her eyes um but she never said yes or no to it and i said like, do anyone ever come over here? Because, like, when she sent me the location, I'm using my Google Maps, it was kind of hard to find because that road was so skinny. I'm, she said, no. I said, you don't have no friends or nothing. She, no, I'm a loner. I said, no boyfriend, no nothing. She, no. And then she gave me a look like, okay, it's time to have sex and all that. So, it was like, okay. Um, I wore a condom. And it was, uh, we did for, like, 10 minutes because I really didn't feel right. I never cheated on my girlfriend a day in my life and all that. And I ended up leaving and I would say about three or four days later, she spams my phone with messages and phone calls. And I had my phone on do not disturb at the time, which means if you call me, it's going to go straight to voicemail. You call again and actually ring. And the messages part, my phone won't light up unless I look. I just have to look and since I'm trying to catch up with the messages with all the spamming, I seen you owe me $200, a deal is a deal. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So I was like, okay, yeah, I just give her 200 whatever. And I just leave it as that. At first I was saying no. And she said, she made a comment saying the condom that I have, she would give to the police and say I raped her if I didn't give her 200 and went on Snapchat calling me the N word saying I messed with the wrong white girl. She's going to come to my job, key my car, get two black dudes to shoot at me and my job. And that was a threat. And I told her literally, I text, I said, I could report this to the police because that's a threat. But I'm not going to do that because my mom said, I'm just going to give you 200 over whatever. And I'm just going to block you and leave it. <clears throat> and uh, I also said I lied to her and said I did a two weeks notice. That way she wouldn't show up at my job because I shouldn't feel uncomfortable being at my own job. Um, so I lied to her. It was like, I'm out of town with my sister or whatever. Pretty much stalled because I was just going to come over, just give her 200 and pretty much leave. Um... Friday morning, I text her. I was like, where you at? She said, leaving Dangerfield, which I can say now, she had a boyfriend, which obviously she lied about. And the boyfriend happens to be neighbors with my grandma, which I can't say personally no, but yeah, we spoke. Um, so uh, after work, I ended up going over there. I gave her, it was, I gave her 250 actually. I gave her 250. I ended up leaving. Then I turned around and I said, no disrespect, but I'm going to block you in front of me, you know, um, because I'm looking at that like prostitution, honestly. I said, that doesn't mean I have a grudge against you. Uh, block is block. Like if I see you around, it's a hey, but I'm going to still go on about my life. And I, I believe she understood that. Then I left and Sunday, I just happened to go on Snap and before I look at someone's story, it's like I've seen her. So I click um, and my mind is like, I just seen her the other day. This can't be true. I'm like, okay. Then I seen another one. I'm like, hmm. So I go on Facebook and I try to do a little research like, is this true? 
And then I seen shot multiple times. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then I'm like, maybe did they find a dude who did this or a female? We don't know. So I go across her dad's Facebook because when we were sitting there talking, I also said, hey, do you like having communication with mom, dad, anything? I also asked how long you live here. She said a month. She said she texts her mom every other day and check up on each other. Her dad, I don't know what the grudge was, but she said, and I quote, if he comes in here, I will be his B-I-T-C-H-A-S-S up. Uh, I don't know what that was about, but I mean, that was their issues. But at the same time, he's still a father and that is still a starter though. You know, they fight or whatever. Um, Tyler explains that Michaela was afraid of her father in hopes that the police will focus on a possible new suspect. He then goes on to say that after he found out about the murder, he went to work as usual. While he was at work, word got around that he was the killer, so random people would show up at his job to yell at him. Eventually, his manager would give him a week off from work. A whole week later, I never received anything, and people were just calling my phone because my name just started getting out in the streets, and I pretty much stayed in the house the whole entire time. It's not running, it's like quarantine. I didn't go out to go eat, no nothing. My name was just getting out and getting out, getting out, and I'm thinking, no, nah, these are just rumors. There's like someone saying, hey, he has the STD, we just spread it. I said, people just talk. They just want something to talk about. But I wasn't really too worried about us. The police and investigators will do their job and they're not going to stop it off till they find out exactly who it is. But I know it's not me, so I wasn't really too concerned. But at the same time, I said, that is someone's daughter. What if this happened to my daughter? So I'm not even mad at the little threats of Michael Dunn, because honestly, I would threat, I wouldn't post it on Facebook, but I would actually threat, though I totally understand. Um, Cause that actually could be a life sentence and I don't even know how many times was she shot. I don't know. Um, do you know? No, I, I know. Was it a lot? No, that I can't release to you. Oh, okay. I'm as part of the investigation. Yes. Um, also, um, The investigator also ended up getting my girlfriend's number. Uh, even though I changed my, she didn't change her. That was in case they wanted to contact me. So it was like, there was really no questions or anything for me. So I pretty much was just laid back or whatever till we get the bottom of this. And for a second in my mind, I'm saying, maybe I should just go up here. They'll just hold me in custody and if you have any questions for me, I'm down to answer. Uh, so I ended up finding me a lawyer just in case, you know, if you have to, uh, which I ended up getting about uh, by midnight anyway. Um, I am still in shock that she's gone. And then uh, I saw the other day they had the funeral. I also seen like pretty much Michael tried to be calm about it when he made a post saying something like whoever did this can you please confess up I saw that and said uh he also said I know you're watching these posts and all that and at the same time out of everyone that works at Golden Chick Christy approaches me out of everyone. And I also said this to my boss, not only did I feel uncomfortable, as far as we know, how do we know that she didn't have a gun on her? She could have blasted off just because. How do I know after we made her leave, she didn't go run and tell Michael, because Michael also made a post saying, when he find out who he is, he's gonna kill him. We don't know if she was going to go get him and come back with that drama. I don't know that. I guess she was trying to pay attention to what kind of car I had or whatever because I have a Dodge Chargers prop. I'm not uh, being funny, but the best looking car out there at Golden Chick. So yes, it's going to be mine as well, which I plan on taking to the shop anyway because the lady, you know, wrecking me. Uh, no injuries for me or her, but uh, that needs to go get fixed. When did the wreck happen? 
almost two months ago, I had a year dropping my stepdaughter off at school. Oh, it's a year that goes like this, yeah. and it's a stop sign down right here. They do much damage then to your car? It did to mine and not hers. I'm like, wow. You get it fixed? Not working on it. They said it would take about two to three days for it, but I never attended to it because it's like, I take my stepchildren to school every single day. Then again, I also work, so it's like uh, it's kind of hard. Tell me about this lottery. That's uh, interesting. Oh, I don't know if I ever met anybody who won a two hundred thousand. It was a five dollar lottery ticket. Really? So uh, how they pay that out all at once, or were I had time? to go all the way to Austin. They taxed me forty nine thousand. It is a lot. The <laughs> government gonna get their share. <laughs> so how do they pay you by the week or month or year? No, or I ain't no getting the whole thing. Yeah, they uh wrote it down in a check. I ain't no making me a whole bank account. And where you got it in the bank? Bank of America. Tyreek continues rambling on about work and other things in his life. The detectives decide they've heard enough, and now it's time to talk with him about why he was arrested and charged with murder. Do you? Uh, think that we would have arrested you? You know, we had a, a warrant to arrest you on. You think we could get a warrant if we didn't know what we're doing and have some facts? Right. You believe that we had some facts to get the warrant? You believe that we, that we know that there's lots of uh, surveillance methods today. You know, there's lots of technology available. Of course, you got all the lab stuff, the DNA stuff, and all this stuff. Some of that takes a little time. We don't, always, we don't have everything all finished immediately. Some of it we got, some of it's uh, pending, but we know a lot about you. We know a lot about the case. And we didn't just run out there and say, hey, let's grab up Tyrant and see what he'll tell us. Mm -hmm. We've got enough to make the case on here we wouldn't get to warrant. Mm -hmm. So the investigation has been done. And you're, you're being deceptive with us on part of that, you know. You're not telling us everything. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. deal, deal is, man, if we didn't have enough, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. what, what I'm trying to figure out, do I think you're a horrible person? No. Mm -hmm. But with what was done, I mean, most people would look at it as horrible. Things happen. I mean, people get in fights. People get shot over that. All we want is the truth, what really happened. And like I said, like he told you, if we didn't have the evidence, we wouldn't be sitting here with you right now. Because believe me, getting a murder warrant is not an easy job. I mean, all I'm asking you to do is tell me the truth, the honest truth. Okay, uh, everything I told you was the truth and uh, me giving her money was the truth. Uh, there was no money found on her there. There didn't put any money left there. I don't know. I left for a second, like I said. And tell, us, I, tell us about the gun that you had. We know you had a gun. We already know that. I have one gun reported stolen, and I also had another. It is... It was a sky, you know that? It was never for harm's way. It was like I said, I feel like someone was always coming after me. I came, I came back. I knocked on the door and she said, come in. And she was sitting on the couch, smoking a lot. And I said, hey, we need to we need to talk and I said I don't really appreciate all the spamming and stuff and then you saying I raped you and not only that in the message she made voice messages calling me gay and a faggot and all that and I said I don't appreciate that neither. Plus that just tells me even if I was gay, you would have slept with me because you did. And she stood up and got in my face and said, she can talk to me any type of way she wants to. This is her house. And I put my hands up and then I was backing up as if I was going to leave. 
And uh, excuse my language, but she said, a white bitch like me would actually kill you and did this with her fist. And then I said, that's another threat. And she said, you can take that how the f you want to take that. And also when we were sitting there talking, when I told you I smoked like half a piece of blunt, I told her, uh, me, I am a little crazy in mind because like, you can tell I'm not a bad person at all. Um, my mindset is this, how I'm real nice to everyone. I don't bother no one or nothing. If you like switch up on me like that, my mindset, hey, you don't deserve it. That's just mindset wise. And I said, and I quote, do you remember when we was talking and I told you that I was crazy in mind? She said, yes. What the f is that supposed to mean? And I, everywhere I go, I have my gun on because I always feel unprotected. I just caught it to scare her. And I said, one of us have to go. When I said that, I guess she thought I was planning the meaning of that means I was going to either let her kill me or that was going to happen because I also saw her last post, which was on a Wednesday, that said, Lord, watch over me and my envy, which is enemies, and put praying hand emojis and 100 emojis, which means uh, to me that she felt like life was over for her anyway. But it shouldn't have been done. Uh, she ended up saying stop playing. And then I gave a sad look. Like the look you're giving right now. I didn't respond or nothing. She said. I'm going to call the police. I said no wait. She pushed nine. And from that. It's, it's like you, you was going to snitch. And I really was not trying. To do that. At all. I was not trying, that was not really the attention at all, um, because um, if anything, if you're saying I want her dead, how come I didn't do it the day we actually had sex? You know, um... Tyreek admits to being the one that shot and killed Michaela. He explains that he engaged in an argument with Michaela, and during that argument, Tyreek pulled his gun. Michaela told him she was going to call the police, and as she was dialing 911, he shot and killed her. Tyreek claims that it wasn't his intention to kill Michaela, but remember, he emptied two magazines. This is actually a serious case and what's going to hurt the most, me not seeing my baby every single day. Like, it was kind of hard for me to go to sleep. I haven't cried in a long time. As a matter of fact, after it got done, I did cry and I've been praying every single day for forgiveness and all that. And it is haunting as well. I can tell that she was a good person because also when I told you my my car was in my dad's house, she was in my back seat the whole time. And the other day, in the back seat of my car, like her spirit was with you. Me. You were in your mind. You were yes, and about her in her uh, mind. my uh, girlfriend would tell you this. It just happens every time that night, like. The, the guilt, I'm just sitting there and then I'm just freezing. I'm just laying down on the bed, looking at the ceiling, not blinking, it's creeping her out. And so when she dialed the nine, what happened from there? I, I took one fire shot. That I believe was in the stomach because I did see her crouch and sit out and all that and like I said, all the anger that I always hold because I don't really get into it with anyone. Uh, people does intend to make me mad. Like it's in mind, it's, you don't deserve to live, but I've never attempted to actually shoot anyone, nor hurt anyone. I would always walk away from the situation. And it just kept going and going and going. And her last words to me was, I'm sorry. And my last words was, I'm sorry, too. And, um, and I remember her saying, please stop. And I put this on my door lock for a sec. I actually did 
because she was on the ground and she was alive, breathing. I crouched down as if I'm gonna get her and take her to the hospital because she was still alive. And in mine, it was, that's really not how it goes. Once you start it, you know, you have to, you have to finish. So it hurts me to say it, but I ended up finishing it. And it really hurts because I'm young and all that. And the, the last person that should have been, did it, even though I feel like someone was going to do it anyway, it shouldn't have been me. Um, How many times do you think you actually shot her? Seventeen. Okay. How many rounds total did you have? I mean, you had two clips. Do you know how many actual rounds of ammo you had with you that day? I might have been wrong. Let me see. Um, that holds. It holds ten inside the clip, and then, as you would know, you can do one in the head. That equals eleven, and if you do that for both, that equals twenty-two but I don't recall doing 22. Yeah, I would say about like 17. So you you think you shot her 17 times? Was it more? Well, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm asking you, I mean. Do I think, okay. If not 17, then 19 at the most. Okay. Where's the gun at now? I gave it to my girlfriend, brother, and he knows someone and they destroyed it. So what happened to Michaela's phone? That, I ended up, I ended up breaking it and then I threw it away. Where'd you throw it away at? That was a back road and it's not Lone Star, but I would say maybe eight to 14 miles down, there's a corner store on the right. Tyree claims that he gave the gun to his girlfriend's brother and he had it destroyed. When the detective asked questions about the disposal of the gun, they realized that the man who destroyed it also helped him hide other evidence. This means he could be charged with accessory after the fact. You think you really got rid of it or do you think you still got it? I believe he actually got rid of it. You say how or you know how he was going to get rid of it? He was talking to me on some personal stuff and told me something that I pretty much told um, A murder, he said he actually ended up getting away with one case of murder and mentions he knows a guy who does like mechanics and stuff like that to break it down and he said they did that and actually I said he burned it and I'm thinking how can you burn a gun but he said yes it's all taken care of um told me the clothes I had on that day it don't matter if it's just regular shorts slides just give it to him and he's gonna burn it and he did it how many times think you shot her before she died she keeps struggling for a while and asking you to quit you? you said she was asking to stop for something there and all honestly you said before she did um i would say this she she was a strong girl. There is no way I could have took that, but at least eleven and was still alive. I was still like, moving. Yeah, was she talking? Like she was trying to say something, and then I had a flashback the other day, because I kept questioning myself: Was she really going to call the police? Then it hit me as she was on the ground. She said, "Mama." So that hit my mind. She was probably trying to scare me, trying to say, hey, I'm going to call the police. But the attention was to call mama. What do you think uh, 
we'll finally kill her. I think uh, bleeding out. The last bullet, I have to say it was somewhere between here and here. I can't know, I can't remember exactly how, but the traumatizing part was just watching it go away slowly and then her eyes was wide open. And that happened after the last shot? Uh-huh, and you just still heard like, uh, like I, I knew it was over. What'd you do then? How long did you stay? I ended up, I ended up leaving and then my adrenaline just started rushing. And uh, in my mind, I was gonna just go ahead and just come to the police station. And I didn't, I stopped. I pulled over, not, not that long, about a good 30 seconds. And I said, I need my baby. And th that's what I did, I went home. No vacation, no nothing. I had my baby since. Now right now, uh, you got any questions that, uh, you know, some things we just can't talk about, but you got anything maybe that you want to ask us? Mm -hmm. um, when exactly will I see a judge? Uh, probably, probably in the morning. He may come see you or he may do it by a video deal that they do some of it now, but you'll see him within the next day or so. Mm -hmm. Also, if you could, um, whatever happens, uh, which um, I'm still going to be heard about to this moment, uh, could you reach out to her family and let them know um, I am truly sorry and hopefully one day uh, they could forgive me and the dad actually can tattoo the date of the day that she passed away in Roman numerals right there across my neck. Uh, that'd be that probably be something you'd need to, you know, later on down the road. I don't I don't think we need to. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, because I know you talking to me. I don't know if you the question the question, and I think this is what you're saying. You know what remorse is? It's like you regret what happened. You feel sorry about it. Yes. Uh, you know, if we we're asked, did he show any remorse? In other words, did he, did he regret, feel sorry about what happened? Did he wish it hadn't happened? Are you telling us, I, yes, you did? You I regret it. I, I think about this every single day. What would have been done differently? It would have been the threats that she did. I could have called the police, even though I literally texted and said, but I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I could have did that. But um, I don't, not you guys, but most polices, they act kind of racist. It's like they just let white people get away with anything and since I'm black, it's like, forget it. Like the other day I'm watching the news, a white dude killed three people. They showed the judge that he got away with it on video of AR, like that, that well, was crazy. We have a job to do <laughs> when something happens. When you have to do your crime job. Happen, crime happens, uh, our law obligations to investigate it. Uh, we're going to investigate it fairly to the victims and we're going to mm -hmm. be fair and talk to you. Uh, you know, we uh, we told you everything up front that we went through there to start off with. We told you you didn't have to talk to us and all that. And uh, uh, I'm glad you cleared your conscience of it. And that way, if, if the family or the uh, district attorney that will be prosecuting the case ask us, did you show any remorse? Was he sorry that it happened? Uh, you're telling us that you're sorry it happened. And that's something, you know, we can pass on. Uh. In the end, Tyreek was found guilty of going over to Michaela's home, then shooting her 19 times. For his murder conviction, he received life in prison without the possibility of parole. The judge explained that a man with a temper like Tariq's should never be allowed in society again.